Um, guys, how do I get to Iron Forge? Looking for healer for stockades. Oh, I'll join you. Dude, let's go cap court and strangle Thorn. Yeah, let's oh, go. Wait, where are we? Ah, finally. Man, this new game's been great. I can't wait to quest in Darkshore next. <laughs> March 2005. The day Lord Kazakh was kited and pulled to the city of Stormwind, marking one of the most notorious World of Warcraft events that created its own tradition. Kazakh's invasion wiped out countless of players' lives and left the Alliance capital of Stormwind in ruins, which would usually be players' safest location to reside in. The day started out as any other. Low levels were running back to the city to learn their new spells. The auction house was bustling, and raiders were setting up for another all-nighter. Everything was ordinary, apart from a thought that entered the mind of one or several scheming players. What if I pull something very dangerous to the Alliance to mess with them? But before we get into that... At time. Are you tired of playing games you used to love but now have become a total mess and you keep asking yourself where it all went wrong? Well, I have one question for you. Do you guys not have phones? Because Raid Channel Legends is here to drag you out of your pit of despair. Raid celebrated its fourth anniversary just last month. The theme of the celebration is dinner party and Raid asked me which champions I would invite. So I have to go with Cephalia, a useful support who can always be on hand in case someone gets a boo-boo. And you know I gotta bring in Glisea, the ice queen along. Keep the drinks nice and chill. Get Forget about Bistofus. He'll be able to both cut up and cook the meats at the grill at the same time with his flaming blades. Finally, I gotta bring in Jintoro, who's all about prolonged encounters. He'll be perfect for keeping the celebration going all night long. But there's more! Live Arena PvP will be coming in Raid's newest update with a pick and ban phase where you go up against others for lots of amazing rewards. Use my QR code or the link in the description and receive Kellen the Shriek. Download Raid Channel Legends right now! Now back to Kazakh's invasion. How did it happen? This method of messing with other players wasn't exactly unheard of. The term training was popularized in EverQuest, where mobs could follow you forever after you had pulled them, as they followed close behind similar to train wagons. People used this technique to grief other players that thought they were otherwise safe from harm. So, over at WoW, players back then also noticed that creatures could technically chase after you forever as well. And a very good class for this would be a... Hunter. Of course, the root of all of Azeroth's problems, I guess. Or any range class, preferably, as you would have to always stay within a certain range of the creature and not run too far away from its radius, and you had to continuously damage it every now and then to retain aggro. Usually people would apply this tactic in order to kite out strong foes and eventually slay them. But what if this was applied to something much more dangerous with malicious intent? And this is where Kazakh comes in. He was a pretty important guy lore-wise, as he was tasked to secure the blasted lands for the Legion, primarily occupying the Tainted Scar, and eventually would be the one to reopen the Dark Portal, thus beginning the Burning Crusade expansion. Gameplay-wise, he was one of the few world bosses which were powerful elites that, although had the strength of instant raid bosses, could be instead located in the open world. Kazakh himself, though, uh, was seen as fairly simple by players back then. His melee attacks weren't too strong, and neither were his spells really. For coordinated high-level groups, it was a pretty straightforward experience. Essentially, most of the action Kazakh would face is him getting pushed around and bullied by raiders for his item drops. They laughed at him, but he never forgot. His rage would continue boiling within him, in anticipation to exact his eventual revenge. The mastermind orchestrators knew that. They saw Kazakh's potential, and they considered his potency in an environment full of level 15s in their Westfall leveling gear, along with some random, constantly respawning NPCs. Thus, they appeared before him on that fateful day, and would begin their operation. They attacked Kazakh to draw his attention, and without delay he would begin his relentless pursuit. The group then slowly began making their way to their destination of Stormwind, as they would have to make their way out of Blasted Lands, into Swamp of Sorrows, through Deadwind Pass, 
into Duskwood and finally into Erwin Forest. Those traveling in these areas may have been able to spot the enormous demon making its way to Stormwind, but could only watch as Kazakh finally made his first step in the Alliance capital. And thus, his rampage would begin. But there were good reasons as to why Kazakh specifically was by far the most dangerous boss to be pulled to Stormwind in this situation. Again, for a coordinated high-level group, he may have posed marginal threat, but if we take a look at his abilities again, we can begin seeing the concerns as with, for example, his ability to heal for 70,000 health whenever someone around him died. And not only that, but he also had Shadow Bolt Volley, which hit every target in a massive range around him with a projectile, and it would also pass through terrain. This would melt anyone who was lacking in levels and gear, and aggro every NPC in the area. Oh, and not only that, he would also enter Supreme Mode, three minutes after he had been pulled, which would cause him to spam his Shadow Bolt Volley every second. And, uh, yeah, it goes without saying that by the time he would reach Stormwind, he already would have been enraged for quite a while. Due to Kazakh's constant healing, players quickly realized their efforts to attack him would amount to nothing as he began his destruction through the city. It wasn't only the low-geared players constantly healing him up due to them getting obliterated in mere seconds, it was also the constantly respawning rabbit guards. Even when facing this world-ending foe, they just couldn't fight their primal instincts of aggroing onto him. That bloke is being highly illegal. We should probably take him to the stockade. Sir, I don't think... Uh... Ah, but not yet. He's a bit too far away from me to care. But when he does get a bit closer... Sir, we really should retreat. I have a family and... Ah, here he comes, boy. Lock him up. Attack! <laughs> People would attempt to desperately scatter. Those who had just logged in or just arrived at the city would be welcomed by a sea of corpses and would soon join them. Players would also try to desperately pull Kazakh to the throne room in hopes that Bolvar might be able to save them. But that also turned out to be futile. For the most part, Bolvar would just sit there, staring at them, maybe even enjoying it as Kazakh would litter the castle with skeletons. Players could only look on from their ghost forms as the unstoppable demon ravaged through Stormwind. But that was when Azeroth's final line of defense would be summoned. Maybe in one of the expansions there could be this big bald guy and... Hey, don't you have pending player tickets? What? Oh. Guess I'll log in and check what's up. You're not supposed to be here. And thus, Lord Kazakh was vanquished and returned back to the Tainted Scar. The players reflected on this horrible tragedy that had befallen them that day. That was awesome! Yo, what the hell? That was amazing! Yeah, let's pull him again! What? And naturally decided to keep recreating it. History was made, and the tradition of pulling creatures to player hubs had been born. People would now continue to pull everything they were able to, to various popular locations. Looking for more for Zergos! Hey, Zergos is right here! Oh, that's nice! Wait, what? What in oblivion is that? At least this time players could coordinate and work together to bring some of these foes down. Players would have their fun pulling world bosses to various places until eventually Blizzard would implement a patch which made it so these world bosses were leashed to their respective areas, meaning they could no longer be pulled outside of them. Later down the line during the TBC Dark Portal Opens event, lore-wise Mr. Kazakh would leave to be a nuisance over at Hellfire Peninsula in Outlands, and in his place he appointed High Lord Cruel who, gameplay-wise and look-wise, was basically the same as him, and he would randomly decide to pay a visit to various places across Azeroth and wreak havoc upon anyone unfortunate enough to find themselves in his path. This was clearly an event that paid an homage to the Kazakh incident, as in this example, he was just 
spawned out of thin air in front of Orgrimmar and thus invading it. I can't let the Alliance be the only ones getting obliterated, right? Then, much later down the line, as many of you know, we had World of Warcraft Classic. <sighs> Which released on patch 1.12. That was sadly a patch where Kazakh and other world bosses had now been leashed to their areas, so it meant players couldn't recreate the exact same chaos as before. But, of course, there were still some pretty good alternatives, and players are pretty stubborn. The most popular had to be Terramis the Devourer, again located in the Blasted Lands. Even though he wasn't nearly as powerful as Kazakh, his AoE ability still made him quite the threat, especially early on in Classic where people were rushing to pull him. Regardless, Kazakh's invasion left its mark on WoW's history as one of the deadliest incidents to ever unfold. I mean, this guy alone was infinitely more potent than the whole Legion forces in the Legion expansion. Those guys were so bad at invading that by the end of it, we ended up invading them back. And this guy over here just wiped out the Alliance in a single day. Go figure. With that, players would continue living on happily ever after, knowing that no other horrible and unforeseen tragedy could possibly befall them once again. Oh. If a horrifying plague was unleashed upon your favorite video game completely out of the blue, who would you think would be responsible for this evil? Sylvanas? Blizzard? No. Much worse. Hunters.